Figma has just released Figma Sites, their very own visual website builder. I'm sure that you, like many other people, have been hearing for a long time that Figma is dead, that Webflow, Webflow is all you need, that Framer is all you need, and that there's no use for Figma. Even though I disagree with that, I understand where those comments come from, but it seems Figma has listened to what people have to say and the fact that using Figma to make a design and then having to go to another tool to make code is actually something that people are trying to get away from. So today we are going to be seeing Figma sites for the first time. I have never used it. Obviously I haven't used it for any actual project or anything like that, but I do want to dive in and see what they have so far. This is the beta version of it, but I think it's going to be very interesting to see what it's capable of and see what it's missing. And we're, we're, I'm going to give you my verdict at the, at the end of this video. I have been building sites for a very, very long time since the days where you had to make everything with HTML tables and Dreamweaver. I'm sure that you, like many people, use Figma for a lot of their design needs. It's the best tool out there right now. And it, we could say it has killed other tools like Sketch, for example. I have used almost every builder out there. I have built websites on WordPress and Webflow and Framer and you name it. I've probably used it before. So I think seeing what Figma came up with and in this beta version, it's, it's very important to clarify that this is the beta version. So I'm not expecting a lot from this, I guess, but we'll see. We're going to take a look at what features they have so far. We're also going to be talking about the upcoming features they have announced. And I'm going to give you my opinions at the end of this video. So let's jump right in. The first thing that you're going to notice here when you go to Figma is that we have a few new options, um, including sites here. So we're just going to go ahead and create a new site. It's going to present us with a few different pre-built uh, website examples. Um, so, you know, we're going to skip that and we're just going to create a new, a new blank site here. So it's going to create a couple of different uh, sizes here for desktop and also for mobile, but it looks like it looks like we're also going to have a few options to do a pre-defined tablet size and then the custom size, which we may do in a little bit. Now I'm saying over here, a plus icon, and it looks like we have pages, navigation, heroes, features, and embeds. So it look, it's just looking like there's a library of pages. It's not very big. And like, honestly, the designs are not great from what I'm seeing here at first, at first uh, glance. And then we have some navigation. It looks like we have headers and footers here, some hero options, some feature sections, and maybe some content sections, and then some embeds. So let's go ahead and make something. Uh, so I'm going to insert maybe this header right here. So by just clicking it, it looks like it's adding to desktop and also mobile. Showing the navigation like this on mobile is very questionable, but okay, we'll go with that. And then let's see, let's also add maybe like this footer right here. So it's kind of cool that it's adding it to what looks like an auto layout frame already. So uh, let's also add some like a hero. Maybe this one would look good. Let's let's put it right after that navigation. Okay, and then maybe a couple more sections here for maybe content. So maybe this one right here. And then let's also add um, maybe like features or something like that, just to make something very generic and very quickly to see what capabilities we can work here. So maybe this one right here. Uh, so I'm seeing, um, yeah, some of these textures are just looking a little weird, but I'm not going to change anything about the design for this. I just want to see, like, for example, if I change the content here, a headline for some text, let's see if I change to another. Okay. So that works. I'm seeing that it's actually changing here for mobile. So the school would have to make the same change twice or copy and paste anything or go to our components or anything like that. And then well, I wonder if that also works if we change the images here. So let's say I want this image to be this one. Cool. Okay. That's changing as well. And then the other thing I would say, maybe if I changed the size here, so it looks like there are no styles applied or anything. None of these are components or anything like that. So unless you're making something very quickly and you don't care about making components and you don't care about, uh, in the future having to make more pages or anything like that, I guess you could just go with it. But, but I'm wondering if, if I change the size of the text, is that going to affect everything or is it smart enough to know that this is only on mobile that it, it should change? And it looks like it is. So I like that. That's definitely cool. Cause you know, obviously we, we, we want to have different styles for, for a mobile in terms of text, uh, text size. And yeah, I wonder what other things would you would be capable of using, uh, comparing like the, your desktop size and your, and your mobile size. So for example, I do work with a few different types of buttons when I'm making a website. Um, so I wonder if making, like, if you had a couple of components here, um, 
Oh, that's weird. Why did it paste it there? I wonder if you had like a couple of different sizes here. Let, let's just make it to test it out. So if, if I have my primary button, but I also have a second button that's maybe a little bit smaller because I want it to be smaller on, mo on mobile. I wonder if if there's a way to assign a different size or like, you know, it knows that this is for mobile somehow. I have no idea how to connect those two things here. But, you know, essentially this would be like breakpoint and then this would be for our desktop size and then and then this would be for mobile. So I'm, I'm just wondering if there's any way to actually link different things um, to to the size here. But oh, did it do it? It actually did it, didn't it? It, it knows. OK, that's surprising. It just knows somehow. <laughs> oh, I see. Mixed, like if I select my, my, wait, primary breakpoint mixed. So this would be desktop. I'm a little confused about how this is working right now, but it looks like, I mean, we can still obviously select which one's going to apply to which size, but it somehow did it automatically when I first put it in there. So that, that is some Figma magic, I guess. So we can just go with that. I like that. That is definitely something useful because, you know, a lot of times you're going to have components that are slightly smaller for mobile and a little bit bigger for a desktop. And you might want to have a lot of control over that. So positive point. Let's keep going and see what else we have here. It looks like we have a search bar, but I'm not sure what you're supposed to be finding with this. Mm, search bar. What is this? Find. I guess I have nothing. Replace. So we can find our button here. Okay, so it's just looking for different elements that you have on, on any of the pages, I'm guessing. Okay. And then they did announce uh, a, a AI and the CMS uh, functionalities that are coming soon in the future. That's pretty interesting. If you want to see that, I recommend that you watch the, the keynote, at least the part that they talk about Figma size where they announced it and they, and they did a, a live demo. And then it also looks like we have some general settings here, site title, site description. So this would be some of that SEO information for the basics, uh, the icon, social media image. And then it looks like we have some custom code here. Include any custom code for ad tracker analytics. Okay, so what happens if I have a lot of code? Okay, thank God that gets bigger. <laughs> uh, okay, and then we get a scroll bar. Okay, mm, I mean, yeah, we'll see how that works when we actually need to put code in there and then what if i wanted to add a tablet size as well so let's just do that here and it's just going to you know make its best guess uh how you want this to display i don't think i would do this i mean maybe I, i'll just leave it like that but, you know i would obviously fix it, fix this maybe keep it as um as a horizontal looking uh layout like that and then well i didn't make a component for this one so let's just ignore that for now and let's keep going. Um, we also have the publish section here. So let's just call this test side and then let's publish it. Let's see what happens. Okay, it may take a few minutes, it says, but yeah, that was pretty quick. And I mean, it's a website. It looks, it doesn't look, I mean, in terms of layout, obviously, that's looking good. Uh, the responsiveness is working fine, except for that button that I would have to create. I don't see any interactivity in the pre-made blocks that I added. And again, I would like, obviously we don't, we wouldn't want that menu to, to work like that. But I think beyond the layout, the most important thing here is going to be the actual code. I'm very curious to see what the code looks like. So let's inspect this and, and see, for example, is this an H1? And how do we even set this up as, as, a, as an H1? Like, how do we tell Figma that this is our H1? Is that going to be connected to our textile somehow? And there's going to be like an extra section to say, this is my HTML H1 title. Uh, because from what I'm seeing here, this is not even a heading, which is concerning to say the least. We have uh, white, a bold headline span and then only an e what is going on here okay so this is very weird i'm not seeing any kind of like actual this is just like a bunch of dips from what i'm seeing and like for some reason the e here is getting wrapped in uh, in a span so that's that's very strange let's analyze a few more of the elements here so i wonder um if this is going to be like an actual button or is it also going to be a div it's also a div instead of a button okay and then I see a lot of the, like I'm seeing this issue once again, we have an N by itself and then call to act show. Hmm. Interesting. 
this is not ideal. I mean, I would be very concerned about actually launching a website that doesn't have like the right HTML tags for, for anything. Uh, let's take a look at here a little bit more and see what's going on. I mean, this is just div city. There are so many divs wrapping everything here. And then you have the lonely little letter in a span for some crazy reason. Like why? And then is our footer, our foot, is, is our footer a footer or is it just like a big div? It looks like, wow, there's so many classes and so much wrapping. So I wonder if this is going to be something directly tied up to the layers that we have here, because, you know, obviously this would be, it would be nice if we could get like the class, like for example, here one would be the class because that's what you named your container. And then you have another div inside of that for this one. But the amount of divs that we're getting in the HTML is not, it's not the same that we're seeing in our actual frames in Figma. So is, is there going to be any way to control what kind of output we get? And then how do we tell Figma that this is our H1? Like, is this going to be tied up to our textile somehow? Somehow are we going to see some kind of option that where we can assign an HTML tag to our different components and our, our different like text and elements and like everything. I hope so, because what are you supposed to do with a website that has code and looks like that? Like that is not very useful. Um, so I don't want to, I don't want this to be all negative. So I think, um, it has, uh, it, it, it has potential, I guess. I mean, I, I think for now, obviously, it wouldn't be fair to compare this to, to Webflow, for example, because this is a beta version. This just came out three days ago. Uh, but I would say for now, I just use this maybe for prototyping, like showing the clients a prototype of a website that you can actually connect uh, like different pages. I mean, you could already do that with a prototype, but this looks like it's a little more powerful. So let's try and see what else we can do, because in the demo, they did show that there are going to be a, a bunch of different new interactions here. So we have hover effect, press effect, reveal, scroll parallax, and we have some marquee, and then we have play. So spin, draggable, mouse parallax. So, I mean, that could be very interesting in terms of uh, making a more powerful prototype, but to like publish like an actual website that you want to use for a serious project, this is not looking very good at all, even though you know, it's, it's interesting. I'm excited to see what they're going to do with the CMS side of things and some of that AI features that I don't really know much about yet. I think for now, I would just use this as a prototyping tool a little bit stronger or like a little bit um, more advanced than the prototyping tool that we already had in Figma. And it's going to be interesting to use some of the, 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 use, the new interactions. But, you know, it's just very disappointing to see that code because what, what are you supposed to do with, with a website that looks like that, like a, a code that looks like that? Now, the other thing that I'm wondering is how is the hosting going to work? Because here when I go to under publish, it looks like we can add a, a specific domain, but I don't think there's any information about how much that's going to be, what kind of plans we're going to have, what kind of uh, settings and, and, and what kind of, like there's no information about that at all. And I think... You know, what people are really asking for uh, from a tool like Figma is we don't want to be stuck in the tool. Like hosting with Figma is probably not something that I want to do. I don't want to be stuck in Figma. Like I want to, if they're going to offer a, a, like a tool that's going to write the code for you and you don't have to worry about HTML or CSS, I want to be able to export that and use that for other projects. Or what if I'm making a web app project and I, there's no way I'm going to use Figma for that, right? So if this is ever going to be useful. I definitely want to export clean and uh, semantically correct HTML and CSS so I can actually use that for other projects outside of Figma. I think that would be my personal opinion on how I would use something like this. But it was interesting, some of those things that they were showing about uh, having some, some code options too, where you can do a little bit more advanced things. But I think for now, it's too soon to tell if this is going to be the next big thing, if you know we should go and, and cancel our Webflow subscriptions, like please don't do that. I think it's too soon to really know if this is going to evolve in a way that is not only a way for Figma to make more money, but also that actually makes our lives easier and it's a tool that we actually want to use. So I think you know my final verdict is it's too soon to actually know uh, if this is going to be uh, the, the next great tool or if this is going to actually solve the, the problems 
and that we designers have and if this is going to be something that actually helps us or something that everyone's just going to mostly ignore or you know it would be kind of concerning that some people start to use this for their actual websites without knowing that this code just looks terrible and there's no there's no tags there's no html tags anywhere to to assign them to to your different components so as a visual tool you know like i said this doesn't look bad once you put it in the browser like it looks like a website but underneath when you look at the code it is just very messy so so in the next few months we should be seeing some updates on this and hopefully the code gets a lot better we can actually decide what kind of html tags we want to use for different elements and i think it's going to be very interesting how this tool evolves in the next you know months and years so yeah we'll we'll be here to to check it out i'll catch you in the next one